Okay, it seems that we are online. It really seems that we are online after a long, 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 long time. Okay, let's wait. We are slightly early. So let's wait a minute for uh, people to connect. Hi, hi everyone. So thank you to Kalaktos, to Wing Chuan Li, so I'm sure I butchered your name, Mohamed Faran, Antonio Luperini, uh, Tom Darko, Ace, uh, Alberto Tarantino, yes, a number of people, Tom Darko, good to have you back, good to have you here, actually. Uh, what time is it? Okay. Dennis Azurbiega, let's discuss the next generation air dominance aircraft and the B-21. Okay, that we can do. Later we can do. Antonio Perini says, I'm listening to a music meteor forecasting of a nebula. I'm not entirely sure that I know what you mean, but it's uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Most Wanted, Mer mm, welcome to Marshal de Sancir. Uh, sorry, I can't read Cyrilitsa. Uh, welcome to Fabus Cannabis. Welcome to Max Marine. So there are 20, 34 users now. Uh, thank you to all of you. Sorry, I can't really say hello. To everyone so welcome back to a live stream after some time uh, I actually realized that we haven't been doing any Q&A for a long time so I thought that it could be a good possibility even because in the online form with the request there is a number of questions of new questions and, and some of them are actually interesting I've chosen a few of the most interesting one as usual and i will try to answer as best as i can trying to ignore those that i have no idea what you're talking about uh, in uh, uh, after that we can have the usual chat uh, and we can have some uh, discussion and some uh, and some um, and some nice, uh, and I spent some, some time together. I expect to do, as usual, a bit more than one hour. Uh, before starting, uh, one more thing that I would like to tell you. Okay, I will never thank enough all the people who are actually members or actually patr patrons and patron because they're really supporting the, can the channel, they're really helping. It doesn't look like there are costs uh, uh, connected with the channel, and we're still to a size where, I mean, this is not, um, this is not a full-time channel, and the, I mean, the, 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 the income that is coming from either the few sponsorships or uh, the, uh, advertising on Google is still still quite unreliable. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But so, actually having uh, a group of people that are actually committed and is supporting regularly is a great thing for me. Is really helping a lot. But now, if you want to support the channel in a different way, now you can go back to your. Uh, young age and buy one of these. Uh, these are aircraft models sold by Air Models, which is a company that specializes in building these kind of models. 
that are not toys, these are decorative models that could be a present for a person who is like us, uh, really passionate about aircraft. This one is a British F-35B, for example. Um, in the description there is a link to the website of the of, uh, um, of our models and it is an affiliate link. Uh, our, uh, the I will get and the channel will get a small commission on each sales that goes through that link. You end up buying something and there is no extra cost to you. So just if you feel like you have an option. And now let's get back to the serious stuff. Uh, I see already in uh, a lot a few questions about the Ukraine in the chat. Yeah, we, we may get to that, but let's go uh, with the people who actually did the official thing and um, actually populated the populated the um, populated the form. Okay. J J J J. Let's start. J J J J J J J. That's how he signed himself. I hope he's not your real name, honestly. Do you think that non-stealth air-to-air fighter will have a future with more and more stealth fighter on the field? Yes, for a number of reasons. Well, first because stealth. Uh, while time goes by, is becoming less and less uh, decisive, is becoming a feature among others. Uh, but as I always say, there is the entire world that is working, including the Americans, that is working on ways of detecting stealth aircraft or stealth weapons. So uh, there are systems that are going to <laughs> there are probably several promising systems and several promising tactics that uh, have been designed just to minimize the effect of stealth. Uh, so stealth will become actually one feature among the others. In uh, so uh, the on the on the flip side, stealth is uh, tend to be something quite complex to integrate in an aircraft. As I said, aerodynamics, it doesn't marry well with aerodynamics. It's not terrible, but still it, it actually blocks you for um, uh, optimizing aerodynamics. And even if you think that dot fight is dead, which I don't, um, even though is assuming is less relevant than it used to be, but it's not bad. But even though if you think that dot fight is dead, bad aerodynamics also means slow lower speeds. Lower speeds means lower range for your weapons. Uh, or um, they mean high specific consumption, highest drive for the aircraft, which means the range can be affected and so on. So probably there I would expect that the air forces of the future will have uh, two tiers that won't be like it used to be high low, but will be very low observability, low very low observable. So that is aircraft that are built to use stealth as their main feature, and the other aircraft cheaper, simpler, less um, complex. Uh, which will implement some stealth features, um, but they will be part of the low mix. So that's the real, that's what I'm thinking. We is is asking Russia Chinese military aircraft engineers working since 2016 close together. Is their concept to smelt its air force together? Obviously not. Uh, they have joint air patrols and pilots train together regularly. Is the Chinese pilot training similar to the Russians? So uh, it is true there is a preferred relationship between uh, 
there is a greater, at that present there is quite a great a relationship between the Russian Air Force and the Chinese Air Force. The Russians have a, their own simplified version of red flag, and the Chinese are generally um, and generally guests. I don't know if the, um, the if it's true the opposite because even the Chinese actually started their own red flags. I don't know if if Russians are guests in Chinese red flags, but yes, it's true there is a close. Uh, uh, relationship. It is probably true that they they are sharing tactics. Rank five is asking, what are your thoughts on other new fighters like the Korean Kai KF twenty one, the Japanese Mitsubishi FX or F three, and others from other countries outside of Western Russia and China? So in general, I welcome variety because a I like aircraft. B, it is generally extremely good from a, for a country that has some capabilities in the military aeronautics sector to invest in this sector because it does, if you want to develop the technology, this is an area that does a lot of good to the economy. Uh, and uh, let you develop... Uh, a lot of technologies. There's probably nothing like them, like military aviation. Even space is probably simpler. Um, so yes, I think it's a good development. They said uh, the two aircraft, the KF-21 and the Japanese FX, are very different. The KF-21 is a medium light fighter with some stealth characteristics. The Mitsubishi FX is going to be designed to, uh, as a sixth generation aircraft. So, are very. The, 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 the KF 21 is. Flying, the prototypes are flying now. The FX are going to. Uh, it will take a long, a long time to see one. Sparehead is asking why turboprop cruise missiles are not built. Uh, two reasons. Uh, propellers can be uh, quite a powerful radar reflector, but mostly because of the speed that you can achieve with propellers is uh, definitely low. Is definitely low. So the, it's probably true that you can maximize the uh, the range using propellers and turboprops, but probably uh, the speed will be, will be definitely low. Potato is asking, we always hear about radar countermeasure, but what about other uh, RF equipment? Can aircraft, uh, can aircraft, air, aircraft to aircraft and aircraft to weapon data links be jammed effectively? You bet. Um, jamming communications, particularly radio communication and data links, is one of the areas where a lot of investments are going. And uh, on the flip, on the flip side, having uh, very robust data links that are inherently resilient um, are um, is uh, is another area of study. So yes, they can be they, they can be jammed and depend on the equipment. Obviously, this is as I had the opportunity to discuss this in one of the old videos about the high technology warfare. In the case of a high intensity confrontation, a high technology confrontation, we really don't know how these. Um, these technology are going to interact because they are actually kept secret. The Russians in Ukraine have, have uh, sort of kept, uh, are using pretty much almost everything they have. The one thing that still seems they haven't used is their full capability in electronic warfare. 
It is capability that have been there are capabilities that have been uh, seen in uh, in Syria that they seem to have that seem to have identified in Syria that haven't been seen and shown in Ukraine because that's that that's an area which is extremely extremely extremely. I mean. It, it, the interactions be, the, between these electronics will be a big element in determining, a big factor in determining the final outcome of, of, of combat. Eric, will the supersonic bomb bomber become obsolete in the future while Russia keep building more to 160, while China and US don't have any plan to build such bomber? Could you um yeah and, and other stuff that you already covered. Uh so um the the uh so even the Russians still have a lot of supersonic bombers. Uh, as we have seen they're using them as missile tanks, uh, missile trucks. They land. They they they, they launch uh, cruise missiles from basically uh, from from the from those aircraft. Uh, you are rightly saying we should uh, be while using supersonic aircraft. Um, yeah, that's probably not strictly necessary uh, for the kind of mission that they're doing now. Uh, the possibility of actually having a high speed dash in a lightly contested area uh, to release the weapons and run away could still be useful that yeah is not fundamental now uh, uh, but so and the russians actually have uh, uh, the russians actually have uh, they, 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 they have a legacy of of these of bombers and that's what that's the reason why they they are using them in. Uh, I mean, I suppose they were they have been developing actually a stealth bomber, but we lost track of it. It's been years. That be it's been years uh, um, since the last update on on the bomber. So we don't know. Any any. Uh, so even though uh, so probably the Tupolev 160 so the new build Tupolev 160 are probably are there due to the fact that they yeah that, that was something that could be done um, that could be done they had the components they still had the the line available so that's probably the reason why they've chosen to build uh, some more Okay, Odds Wester is asking, how and when did Otis became self-aware and is he integrated with Skynet? So Otis became self-aware when I was trying to learn uh, to use Python uh, to work on the Internet of Things, no? Um, and uh, I don't know exactly what I did, but he became self-aware and that's it. Uh, he's integrated with Skynet? No, uh, they went on a trip together some time ago. He came back, he said I don't want, that he didn't want to speak with Skynet any longer and he's not going to discuss with, uh, not going to keep in touch anymore. I never discovered exactly what happened. So, Nevidinka is asking, why does the stealth fifth generation specs design keep changing to US tune? Defense analysts and keyboard warriors are quick to point out Russian style design flows nonconformance, even though it is not yet a finished product, although the US themselves had, has built contradictory stealth designs and then goes on describing uh, stealth features and uh, and so on. So the point is, these aircraft generations are not really. It's marketing, basically. It, it's sort of, uh, it's sort of okay to 
it's sort of okay to actually identify a group of aircraft that have s sort of similar features, but at the end of the day is marketing. So all discussions say, no, this is a true fifth generation. No, no, it's not really a fifth generation. It's 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 really not particularly interesting in, in the sense it's it's the actual feature, the actual performances, the doctrines and everything else, the training part of it that matters, not really uh, the generation itself. Six to seven A. Will you post sources in the description? I'm interested in reading directly after watching your video. So, in terms of sources, uh, not all the sources can be posted uh, for two reasons. I tend to rely still on paper sources that were never that not end up being published online. So there are some military magazines that I still read on paper. I have nothing here in the other room, the other, the other side, but I still uh, rely on those. Uh, the other reason is that sometimes the sources, even though I have no specific, uh, let's say, no access to, uh, let's say, uh, classified information at all, uh, sometimes some analysis and some judgment derives from a conversation with people who don't maybe don't want to, to be mentioned and so on. So it's not just web links. Uh, the second, but further to this, I recently started uh, to do. Uh, something that turns out to be turned out to be relatively interesting for the members and the pa I'm posting for the members and the patrons. That is, I am posting the sources for the patrons and the members uh, only because I thought that I wasn't giving them enough perks, and many of them then didn't seem interested to the kind of perks that I was providing. So I thought that this. Could be uh, this could be a good this could be a good thing for them. So, I if there if I do a video which is based mostly on a single source or comment of an article or, or um, uh, the only source is a specific article uh, like the one that I like in the last video where I mentioned the South China Morning Post. Uh, I will, it will be mentioned in the video. The general sources for a descriptive video, that's for the or an historical video, that's uh, that's for the patrons. Grey Hawk, sir, thank you for calling me, sir. Can you please comment on the compatibility of different families of software-defined radios? Is it possible for a fighter jet equipped with uh, Blah blah. Um, so there are several. Um, so there are several families of uh, software-defined radios. In 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 that world, the the the, the standards that they're using are called waveforms, and there are several types of waveforms in the question. The, 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 the SDR was mentioned, another that comes off on the top of my head is Sync Girls, but there are several others. And uh, these are basically communication protocols. So as they are basically standards that define how the communication is encrypted, uh, the um, frequencies, and all the other features that are actually necessary. For example, if it is a frequency hopping uh, software-defined radio, it uh, defines the algorithm that needs to be implemented for frequency hopping. So, in general, all the radios that adhere the same standard can communicate with each other. And today, it's becoming pretty common to have radios that have more than one that support more than one waveform. So, communication tend to be relatively seamless. So, the answer is basically yes.
Tuffy boy. Add-ons that features like those reported for the Mac 346. Educate us. So I have, I actually tried to look this up. I have zero, uh, but I was interested. I mean, I had, I have zero uh, information that someone is trying to implement stealth on the Mac 346. And it doesn't make a lot of sense because it's a trainer, it's an advanced trainer and uh, um, it can also be used as a light attack. So uh, for a trainer, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, for a light attack, uh, for a light attack aircraft, uh, pff, it's debatable. So I don't know. If you have any specific news, I'm happy to hear. That's up. If you were going to design a fifth generation long distance fighter strike aircraft, for example, a modern version of an F 14 uh, or uh, uh, with a range on an F 11, what would you be your optimal features of the aircraft with no design restrictions? So, that's an interesting question. Um, Obviously, it's very difficult. The first feature would be open architecture. Must be extremely, extremely easy to integrate with any kind of weapon. So it doesn't never get sold. The second feature should be um, again, again connected with the open architecture, the upgradability. There must be room inside the fuselage for, to, for upgrades. There must be electrical power for new systems. There must be um, thermal, there must be a thermal management system that can support the growth of the aircraft. Uh, then I would rather build a large aircraft with a lot of internal fuel, so no. Uh, underwing stores are used by are used by <clears throat> are used by uh, let's say external tanks and um, obviously needs to have an AISA radar um, <coughs> possi possibly with the possibly with the with more than one antenna uh, it must have sensor fusion, absolutely. Um, rather than probably rather than having a sensor like the F thirty five, I would rather install maybe two or three earst uh, balls on the aircraft uh, to do this job. Should have uh, engine should be variable uh, cycle engines because they are big improvement in terms of efficiency. Uh, possibly, possi yeah, in this age of low observability, uh, even a small uh, internal uh, weapon bay that can carry two or three medium range air to air missiles could be useful, not to be used normally, but for some missions, for example. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. I mean, uh, probably transvectoring. So what would be, it would be probably the general configuration of Suhoi 57, but with a different engine with Western engines, and um, with Western engines, and uh, at least part of the electronic, Part of the electronics, Western electronics, probably sensor fusion, the target recognition, so it's probably better Western. That's the that's what I would do. B fifty two fan. Can you do a video about current OAX planes and their possible replacements? Uh, it's in the pipeline. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, but it will come. 
does. Hi, I love your video, especially the music. Just wondering where do you get your footage from? I try making videos, I don't use Creative Commons videos on YouTube in my footage, but sometimes it's hard to find specific things. Uh, okay, so this is this is for mostly for creators, but it could be interesting even for others that sometimes I get comments say, but ah no, we want to see more footage, we want to see more pictures and so on, and um, I don't have them. So, in, so obviously, it, on to use something that is covered by copyright, you need uh, to ask for uh, permission. This is true for footage and it's true for photos. Okay. In uh, the photos that I can use are those photos that are either in the public domain or uh, licensed with a, some form of Creative Commons license, uh, which is the reason why you see on, on, in almost every video and picture the, the attribution to the to the source. These are. The sources that I use for pictures are Wikipedia mostly, and uh, but also the official websites of the um, Air Forces or the Ministry of Defenses, because they either release their pictures and, and footage, often they release it under the public domain or they release it uh, uh, as uh, Creative Commons. NATO channel, for example, uh, on YouTube uh, is not Creative Common, but they say you are free to re to reuse the to reuse the footage if you don't if you, if you actually attribute NATO channel. Um, the so you need to look for those most of the. Footage on YouTube you can't use the stuff that is uh, Creative Commons is generally of low quality. Um, there are pictures that in theory you could not use, but nobody cares, which are typically those that are coming from the companies. Some companies have actually press kits or a, a small website exactly for the press where they publish pictures and videos that can be reused, but even the other pictures on their website, you are not slandering them, they won't care. They, they, they don't even check you, they will let you... So that, that, that's, that's not strictly correct. You can always say that since you are pretty much discussing and commenting those specific uh, uh, objects, these this is falling under the fair use attribution in the United States, but remember, it's not you nor the uh, publisher of the picture that is deciding that something is fair use or not. It can only be decided by a judge. So if you're using using those, is 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 always, is always a risk. I try honestly I try to minimize unless it is I use them only. It is very important, and there is no alternative. Uh, so there is the risk that maybe one day someone will ask me to the, 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 uh, to take down the videos because I use a picture or something like that. Now YouTube actually providing also a feature where you can cut um, a video and you can, can't always do that. Some cases may not uh, make sense, but that's, that's what it is. Coming to the music, uh, uh, I'm glad that you like it, but uh, the music is mostly is mostly stock stuff. There are websites where you can get uh, stock footage and uh, stock music. Pixabay is one free for pictures, photos, and footage. Um, but there are plenty, plenty of websites where you can get some music that can be used for the videos. Uh, sometimes people ask me, oh, I, I, I like that music, but I don't find any reference. You, will, you won't find it. The only way for finding it is being on the website that I've used. Currently, I'm using Storyblocks. In the past, I've used... Um, 
oh god uh, um, I, I use the others um, so it depends on but that music you will find just on this website Tapioca where are you from? this is one of the <laughs> questions that comes uh, to always come up I am Italian but I live in UK Oak tree. What do you know about the Russian anti-stealth uh, radar? Uh, one that requires at least two radar stations placed at least 300 kilometers away. How does this work? How practical is the idea? And how well do you think, think it could work? The idea is extremely... It exists. They have a few... In the Baltics, they have at least two units working. Uh, it's a rather practical idea and it's not that far off because uh, this is going to be static radar where the receiver is not placed together with the emitter. And uh, considering that stealth uh, means mostly deflecting uh, or reflecting better the electromagnetic energy in a direction uh, different from that of the emitter, so not reflecting directly back to the emitter, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, could be that the, the I, um, this is one of the things that I was probably actually mentioned about the Russian coastal defenses. In the videos about the Russian coastal defenses was covered, was marginally covered. So this is, a, a, but yes, it, it could work. Like everything is not. Uh, is not black and white, so it's not making stealth useless. Stealth is useful. Um, Twenty years ago, there were there was no way of intercepting or identifying a, a stealth aircraft. Today, it starts being not so true. Hypersonic. What type of radar antenna would a missile use and how much uh, energy is? I think it was uh, would radiate or would, uh, or would just receive energy from another source such as the platform it was la launched from. So there are missiles that are both um, active, uh, use both active radar homing, so they have a radar, and semi-active semi -active radar homing, so they are using the radiation reflected from a, um, a different radar. Uh, if you look on the channel, there is a playlist about air-to-air -air weapons and missiles in general. There, it is, there are a couple of videos that explain all of this in quite a decent detail. Benny, this is the only question about Ukraine. I assume Ukraine's Soviet era air force cannot use NATO weapons such as cruise anti ship anti radiation missiles. This seems crucial if Ukraine wants to strike high value targets. I've heard that the 16 Polish MiG were upgraded with modern avionics such as Mil STD 1553 data bus, which is not modern, it's quite old to be honest. Will it be possible for Polish MiGs to launch a cruise missile like Storm Shadow? If further modification were necessary to allow this, how long might they take given the urgent need? So weapons integration was, is, I mean, is a big problem. Uh, it is something that I was mentioning before, use an open architecture, make the weapons integration as easy as possible. There are several elements to that. The most important one is that you must achieve clean separation between the aircraft and the payload. So is exquisitely aerodynamic and uh, flight mechanics problem. Uh, before putting any weapon on any aircraft, uh, it is necessary to do a lot of extensive tests in uh, the wind, in wind tunnels or do a lot of Computation fluid dynamics depend always depends on uh, your level of confidence. 
and um, to make sure that the aircraft can separate in at least in some attitudes and at some ranges of speed and height and so on, clearly from uh, the weapon. Uh, so, uh, the, so the answer is it depends. The second element is the mechanical interface with the aircraft, in the sense that the pylons are not stupid. The pylons contain uh, um, standard mountings, standard connect, standard mechanical harnesses and connectors and uh, hooks, uh, pin, pins, whatever. There are several. There are several models. There, there are a few standards actually around, and uh, they must uh, um, the, the, the the weapon must be designed to, to fit into that connector. Typically, Western weapons don't fit Russian connect, Russian pylons. So you should at least fit um, Western pylons, which I suppose on the Polish aircraft has been done already. Then there are the, then there are, there is the, there are the, 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 the physical connections with the, with, with the aircraft. Mm, you have there must be electrical connections to power the, the weapon to, 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 to give instructions to the weapon, to give commands to the weapon from the onboard computers. And plus some weapons actually need some other equipment. For example, the, uh, so some models of the old model sidewinders uh, required um, some cryogenic fluid in the pylons to cool down the sensor. Uh, the Phoenix had something similar, we had a, a cooling system that needed need to be need to be put need to be integrated with the F-14. So there are several problems. There are several mechanical and aerodynamic problems. And when all those are sorted, then you must be capable of giving the appropriate commands to the weapon. In principle, you can always uh, put a box in, 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 the, in the cockpit that could give some commands to the weapon, but Truly, the, wep the weapons should work integrated with everything because otherwise a lot of their effectiveness uh, is lost. So the integration so, so it could, be, could be a very com com complex problem. In, um, and in general, integrating uh, Russian or Chinese uh, stuff with Western... Uh, systems is complex. The Saab is uh, extremely advanced. That was one of the requisites of the Gripen to be extremely easy to integrate with everything. Um, also, the Israelis tend to build their stuff in a way that is easy to integrate. So, it's not easy. It's not something that can be done in a hurry. Then at work time you may risk and cut short on the separation, for example, but I don't know if it is a, if it is a, it is a reasonable thing to do. And that was the last question. Okay, so what time is it? We have been speaking for 43 minutes. I suppose we can have half an hour of uh, questions from the chat. So, oh, a lot of this, I can see a lot of discussions are going on. Uh, Alex and me, oh, you didn't got any, no they say saying that you didn't get any notification for the live stream. 
Um, oh, sorry, that's curious. That's curious. You should. You should actually. If you actually uh, click the click the bell, you should receive a notification for these things too. That's quite. That's quite curious. Told you stack. Uh, India seems to integrate tons of mixed systems and do it well. Russian aircraft flying with Israeli, British, Indian, and Russian weapons. That's true. That's correct. I was forgetting. Um, the Indian, the Indians have probably become specialists in that, and the, the the fact that they're working with these in the Israelis, that, uh, for the Israelis, one of the considerations because for them, obviously, it is important to export what they can. DGE, is there any news about the stealth capabilities of the Grip and E? Does it still have a future in the air superiority arena? Um, so, as it's definitely not stealth, it doesn't even integrate a lot of stealth. As what we know is that some radar absorbing materials have been used, but this is which is nice to have, but it's definitely not low observable. And the Gripen, I think, is a very clever uh, model that end up in a world uh, that doesn't want uh, that idea anymore. I think it is... Uh, I mean, this idea of having a relatively small, lightweight, all-purpose system has gone out of the window, probably. So I don't, I don't expect, considering the, the latest news, I don't expect a brilliant future for the Gripen anymore. It's a pity because probably the Riksdag will never let Saab design a new, completely new fighter. So we are probably going to lose another uh, manufacturer that was pretty much holding on, holding to the, <laughs> holding to the cliff with it, by, by, by the, the, by the, with the nails, but it's probably going to fall in uh, five, ten years from now. Will you make more videos of the J20 and J31? Uh, so, there is Cassius EU is asking. There is a lot of uh, requests. A lot of people want to know about this. Now, the J20, we have spoken quite a lot. J31, J35, as soon as we know a bit more, yes, it will probably cover. SRN 1850N, I noticed images of a Russian fighter being jet being accompanied by a drone recently, fly with a missile catcher. Uh, well, it's been a while that the Okotnik, which by the way, there was um, a pre-production unit was presented, it's been flying with the Su-57, so not really. Alex MB, yes, what about the grip and stealth capabilities? Yes, I was saying before, again, nothing special. They, they keep saying that Saab is one of the best producers of uh, jamming systems. DG saying that got a notification six minutes ago. Uh, it's, okay, it's YouTube. Welcome to YouTube, guys. I should probably should probably start uh, the video with an empty image, uh, the live stream with an empty image, uh, say half an hour before. So when I come here, everybody who was interested got the got the the notification. Yeah, that's YouTube. Wing Chuan, Wing, Wing Chuan Li, sorry, uh, Indian Air Force confirmed Mach 2.15 with DSI in AMCA. Could you talk about it? I am not talking anymore about Indian and Pakistani stuff because every time I do, the comment section becomes, you imagine what? And I, as a creator, I have the responsibility 
to look after the um, to look after the comments as well. And uh, you don't uh, you don't see what I see that is actually intercepted on YouTube when people are actually menacing someone else or or their death menaces or uh, phrases like we should kill you all or stuff like that. No, that's not okay. So sorry guys, until you learn to behave, no more no more uh, no more India, no more Pakistan. In someone that whose name is is in Cyrilitsa, uh, so I don't no, I can't read it. What about the sixth generation? It looks as if any of the fifth generation aircraft can be converted into a sixth generation aircraft through modernization or there are difficulties along the way. I think that we should just wait and see which are the actual features that are going to come up to come out uh, because uh, because I think is marketing. Uh, the sixth and I think that um, and while the difference between the first and the second and third generations were quite high, just between the third and the fourth, the difference start becoming smaller. Between the fourth and the five, stealth is a big thing, but after, uh, other than that, there is, uh, well, stealth and sensor integration, but that's really not a, really not a aeronautics is weapons. Uh, but from fifth to sixth is probably a very small, uh, very small jump. A small, a relatively small jump. Is will be probably more of the same. There's the, the the big thing is probably unmanned, but everything else it will be. Tullius Tech, can you can we please have your thoughts on the naval Hornets versus the naval Rafales with respect to Stobar carrier? I don't know, guys. I, as far uh, as I know, the Rafale uh, heavily needed a catapult, so the, the French not even considered uh, certifying it for sure take off without on a ski jump. Uh, on the other side, I know that the Hornet has been tested on uh, on land on a ski jump, and it was capable of taking off with the usual heavy penalty of uh, of weight. So, since I suppose this is about the Indian carriers uh, uh, again, uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Irfan Muhammad, thoughts on Chinese engine service and support? They are getting better and better. Um, the latest generation are pretty much on par with the Russians and are getting very, very close to, to, the, Western, uh, to the Western units. So that was an area that where they were supposed to, to still be lagging. But they are they are catching up very quickly. Alberto Tarantino, would you consider a fifteen EX as a perfect tactical mission controller for future fighting drones? That's one of the mission that that aircraft could have, I believe. Uh, I think that the F fifth. I think that the Air Force should not give up a platform like the F-15, honestly, because performances are still important, and so you still want to have a group of aircraft that have a good performances. What would you recommend to countries with low budget in defense against fifth-gen jets, countries such as Latin America or Eastern countries in Europe, Buy the S400 and the S500. Don't try to play the same game. Because uh, if you don't have the... If, uh, if, if a can't... 
So it's good that a country builds the aircraft, but if the purpose is going against the top players, you need a symmetry. You will never beat them. You will never beat the United States at their game. Uh, unless you're China. In the sense, China is exactly what they're trying to do. They, they are trying to become better than the, the, the long-term plan is to become better than the, United, the, the, than the United States at their own game, but doing uh, but their own, but with their own indigenous hardware. So um, if you're a small country and you you are worried about being attacked by the United States or by China, well, a get some nukes. This makes everything more difficult. Uh, B get the AS four hundred or the S or the AS get the S four hundred or the S five hundred because that's a, that's an asymmetry. Time pass. If Su-57 stealth is failed, the tech, why Indian Air Force rejected the Su-57 offer? Uh, it was not exactly in these terms. Uh, the Indians, so uh, the, the original idea was that the Indians were cooperating in the development. The Russians were not ready, and they are never ready, to give away all uh, their past technologies and share them with India. Uh, plus, the Indians wanted basically an alternative to the F-32, and the Su-57 is not that. So, for these two reasons, they rejected it. What is then, what happened, and it is one of the reasons why I keep not speaking about India, it became mainstream uh, on, uh, on the internet, this idea that the Su-57 is so crap that the, that the, Indian, um, that the Indians did, didn't bother actually buying it. Uh, that, that's not exactly what, how the, the, the story went. But unfortunately, that's the attitude of many Indian bloggers, many Indian channels, many, many Indian non-professional observers. So. Safran so General Electric seems only to future jet engine manufacturing. Could you talk about the modern jet engine and technology? No, no, it's not. Uh, it's not the case. Pratt and Whitney, Pratt and Whitney will still be there. Um, Rolls Royce will still be there. The Russian Lulka will still be there. Um, the Chinese will still be there. So they are not the only ones. Then. Going in depth on the engines is something that I thought for a while, but is an incredibly dry subject. In the sense that if I start drawing diagrams how the pressure varies within the engine and blah blah, there are some things that are probably uh, lend themselves to be put in a video, but it's, it's quite a lot of work. It's, quite, it's mostly a very technical th thing. I don't know how many people are going to to, to to watch me discussing of the P1, P2, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, or of isentropic expansions or stuff like that. Uh, we can do some, but not that much. Dennis Azurbiaga, all people here are very smart and probably engineers and mathematicians. Yes, all the people on this live stream, I think so, but there are 64 people on this live stream. Uh, of the, hundred, the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people sometimes that watch the videos, not all are like this. And you can do education, and, and I always, I, 
that's the problem that the channel has, that channel like mine has. I always have to strike a balance between trying to explain the stuff in the way it must be explained, so that which is the stuff that you don't find, that you don't easily find anywhere else on YouTube, and doing it in a way that is palatable also for people who are actually interested in aircraft technology, in science technology, but um, they don't have this technical background. I'm constantly in this conundrum. Marshal de Saint Cyr, how much longer will Rafale be relevant in a modern battle space? In a modern battle space, I think a very long, for a very long time, because he, um, because I think he uh, sits in the sweet spot of several uh, of several technologies and several configurations. So, as a long autonomy, but not too. Is a long uh, range, but not too much. It's fast, but not too much. It is sophisticated, but not too much. Um, so I think it will be. It is low observable, but not too much. I think is is it sits really in the in, in a sweet spot. Um, today we. That, that's not if if it was designed today probably would have better engine obviously would have better engine is a better uh, improved electronics from the start but the probably two big difference would be that we probably show some corners to improve the low observability and it would have different better better engine different engines but everything else would probably stay the same Hakan Bjorkman, what do you think about the future of Gripen as well? Sweden recently applied for NATO membership. Will it be dead or a great compliment to other NATO fighters? As I was saying before, uh, I'm afraid it is dead, particularly with the particularly with what happened recently for the Finland and Canada. It is a concept that you are embracing the, the one of the light multi-role fighter that is easy to operate but also sophisticated, still lacking some performances in some areas. It is a concept that not many are willing to embrace because everybody wants to want of the F-35. And the United States are definitely pushing the F-35, uh, which uh, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not an F-35 hater. The aircraft in itself is great. as capabilities that uh, are now are found in other aircraft like the Rafale or the Sukhoi 57, but the level of integration that the uh, F-35 has is not available, is, is not, doesn't exist in those aircraft. And the level of low observability that the F-35 has uh, is not found anywhere. So the F-35 is a good aircraft, but it's also a, polit a political instrument. It is pushed by the United States as a way of actually uh, making the other air forces branch of the, of the United States Air Force. And uh, I've been told by someone in the know that I shouldn't be worried by the fact that the air the that the that the aircraft is is too tied too connected with the uh, American uh, way of the American infrastructure and the American um, but I still think that the aircraft is uh, uh, so I don't think that if uh, Japan decided to use uh, the F-35s against an American carrier group, not that it has to, it would be allowed to use. But uh, I'm, I don't think it will work. But giving, going back to the... Um, so, 
giving going back to this to, to your question i th to the grip and question i think that the grip and is actually sort of um, as a concept is a sort of that which is a pity in a sense that uh, i think that again a high low mix where uh, oh thank you thank you Matt, Jing, Matt, Matt, Matt Ginger, I will be there in a minute. So I think that the concept is that, uh, but I, I think it would have been a great, great replacement for the F-16s to be the low part of the mix. So Matt, Matt uh, Ginger, which actually was kind to... Are there any updates on the B-21? Heard a few policy commentators suggesting it, it could suit Royal, the Royal Australian Air Force needs in the South Indo-Pacific. Regards from New Zealand. So the B-21 should fly for the first time this year. Uh, apparently the project is roughly on track and they are not having too many problems. Uh, so, um, so it's coming out. Will be sold abroad. It's a total order because uh, it would be a really advanced aircraft. So I don't know if the United States will be happy to sell it. Could suit the Royal, the, the Royal Australian Air Force. Uh, do you have to penetrate long range in contested airspaces? I don't know, could be useful against China, if that's what you guys are thinking. Uh, by the way, I'm a great rugby fan. So, and uh, for me, New Zealand and All Blacks are actually a synonym. So it's always a pleasure to, be, to speak with someone from uh, New Zealand. Alex MB. Okay, they're just talking with someone else. Uh, India again. Uh, F-35 Mika Peltokorpi. F-35 squadron, squadrons won all but one fight during finish evaluation phase. That is main reason why Finland chose it. Gripen is a very good plane, but that was just not good enough. Ah, yes, of course. If compared with the F-35, it falls uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. It definitely falls, uh, falls behind. Uh, though, if you want an aircraft that like the Swedes do, can be can be refitted by a group of four conscripts and, um, and an SEO on a road in the middle of the in the, on a road. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> I actually had some. I didn't feel well in the past few days, and I still have some things. I'm actually. I look okay. I see. I look okay on the on the screen, but I'm actually a bit, still a bit wobbly. Anyway, um, the if you want something which is, uh, if you want something which is, uh, can be easy to disperse, very rugged, that can be used in, a, in a. Um, in a austere environment that can integrate every weapon, so you don't depend from one manufacturer um, that that can use um, that you you can get from the grip and you can and sub is is okay to sell you everything about the grip and to let it's not they're not retaining any technology anything so that's. Uh, that could have been um, in 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 uh, as a overall solution could have been interesting. Obviously, you probably then probably you need uh, two grip ends armed with meteors to beat a single F thirty five, two or three grip ends, uh, and possibly armed with meteors to beat a single F thirty five. 
Jacob F-35 assumes you remain within the American sphere of influence. Uh, surely Germany, Italy, Belgium and Denmark, and Denmark won't want to remain American pup puppets for another century. Uh, you're right, that's the problem from the point of view of, uh, of a non-American Air Force. The, um, the, 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 um, and I actually think that the German and Italian interests were 100% aligned with the United States during the Cold War, but they started to diver diverge. So I don't know if it is a reasonably is a reasonable uh, move to get the F-35. Giuseppe Guerrieri uh, is actually asking, uh, hi, what do you think about the mix in Italy of F-35 and Eurofighter? That, well, given, so a small number, so I think that Italy alone, if invested for real, could get close, not at the same level, but quite close to Great Britain, level of Great Britain. So I would really be tempted to say that probably the best mix would be a national, a mix that had at the center a national aircraft. It will never happen. Then uh, Eurofighter zero problems, uh, F-35, uh, what we've said so far. Death. Not sure that 100 billion German defense budget will actually happen. Uh, yeah, it is possible because um, because uh, it is possible because uh, Germany has a um, the, the 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 interest of uh, I mean the national interest of Germany would be probably today to keep good relationships with Russia because not only it provides raw materials at a reasonable price, but it's only a very good market. So the sanctions for Germany and for... And Italy is in a similar situation. is in a situation that is not too different. So for Germany and Italy, the, the interest would be to, to keep good relationship with, with Russia. I know that polit in the current political situation, is is impossible, but if if we if we if we remove any any sort of uh, any 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 sort of of ethical and uh, moral or international law coverage, that's what lays bare is the fact that probably Italy and Germany would have. In interest in in keeping good uh, keeping good relationship with Russia, whatever Russians are, whatever the Russians are doing. So, Irfan Muhammad, why the Su thirty five, Mig thirty five, and Su fifty seven didn't attract buyers? The MiG-35 was not that great aircraft in the sense that the two now MiG and Suhoi are under the same umbrella and MiG is pretty much a more aging personnel towards Suhoi. So MiG is, uh, MiG is basically a brand now. It's nothing more than a brand. Uh, 35 and 57, um, well, China bought the Su-35 and quite a lot of, and quite a few of them to copy them, actually, to reverse engineer, but to reverse engineer them. 
So, but this time the Russians, rather than saying, uh, rather, than, rather than having an argument, said, oh, okay, that's fine. As long as you pay a proportionate price, you can do that. Um, the Su-57, um, but in general, the Russian aircraft are living in a, a difficult moment because the United States, because the United States, <coughs> Because the United States has a um, the United States has um, a new law that uh, you can extend sanctions to the countries buying Russian weapons. That's one of the reasons why, for example, the Egypt is on the verge of cancelling the order. Um, so it, it, they they are in a difficult um, with it is a difficult international situation. Tinder X X Y Z adult dating site. Wow, that's great! Uh, I I will immediately immediately go there and see what they are going to to show us. Okay, let me. Let me kill this guy, kill these guys. Report. Okay. Suppose we are sexy enough without any help. Okay, what time is it? Uh, 50 minutes past nine. Okay, I think I need. Uh, uh, I think I need a break. So sorry, sorry, I'm reporting these guys. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Any any other. Uh, any other question? Okay, I thought I thought that everybody was going on the on the on the Tinder site. Okay. Okay, Alex, thank you. I, I did as well, so Oh, thank you, Death. Ten euros. Thank you so much. And through your stack, please, can we have Otis hack these datings? <laughs> I must tell him. Alex and B. Sexy Sukhois were to blame. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Okay, uh, Rob Mack, would there be any advantage in building a next generation tornado like plane? Uh, but that architecture is probably gone. I mean, if you, well, actually, if you want exactly the same performance that tornado had, could still be useful, but today propulsion has improved so much that probably won't be the case. And also the Tornado was basically a dedicated platform to this is the era of multi-role aircraft, so uh, basically that's it. Most wanted, in simple words, does plasma stealth prevent sensor fusion? If yes, then is the practical use of plasma stealth only possible in reconnaissance aircraft? Uh, the fact that plasma stealth is working in, is still out for debate, so it's still possible to create something which is practical and effective. Uh, well, the result is worthy after, it's still up for debate. Uh, then sensor fusion is something completely different. So if you have a working sensor, fusing it is a soft with something else is a software problem. It's not related with the plasma. Max Marine, last question. 
is in your idea of what is the most maneuverable fighter jet, probably the Suhoi 57. Probably today the Suhoi 57. Okay, let's stop here. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for those who actually have contributed. It's something that is really, uh, that have contributed. This is something really, really uh, useful. Um, some, uh, uh, so I'm trying, there's one thing I, did, I would like to add with a different thing, something, some news about the channel. Uh, I am trying, I haven't been speaking on about Ukraine for a long time, um, because actually there are several reasons for that. But what I'm trying to do is to organize, to invite a couple of people who have been coping, uh, uh, covering the the conflict, and they are very, uh, they have um, reliable sources. They are very knowledgeable uh, on uh, the sector. I'm not telling who are they now, because still it still has to happen. But, um, yeah, if you are interested in some crane coverage, and, um, we will, we will, uh, we will get there, okay? And we will do it uh, big time. So, thank you again, thank you, thank you very much for watching. And, uh, well, see you in the